I am so glad to be with you this morning. Did everyone get the handouts um, on the lesson? Um, those of you who don't have it, um, I think Sunshine and, and Dennis may be passing it out right now. So um, I will just wait a moment uh, because I um, am inviting you to follow uh, me on the, your outline. I'm trying something um, a little different this morning. Um, it may seem a little bit like um, a lecture <laughs> with the outline and everything. <laughs> But you know, you never know what's going to work until you what? Try it! <laughs> oh, thank you so much for, um, for being with me on this little um, experiment. Our theme today is healing. It's all about healing. In every moment of our lives, we are healing. Whether we feel it, whether we are aware of it or not. And so we begin with the scripture that I chose this morning for our lesson from Matthew, the 19th chapter, the 26th verse. And it reads, Jesus said, with God all things are possible. With God all things are possible. That makes total sense when we're talking about healing. And we begin with spiritual healing. With God, all things are possible. And you know, sometimes we, we listen or half listen when our wonderful Dorothy is reading the daily word to us. So today, because the daily word is on healing, I chose to take some of the quotes from the daily word and ask you to recite with me from the handout the quotes from the daily word because I really want you to feel these statements of truth within you. So let us in, allow these words to infuse our bodies. Let's begin. I am open and receptive to God's healing power within me and within my dear ones. I cannot limit God. I listen to the still small voice within and feel guided along my healing journey. If fear and worry get the better of me and I start to feel anxious, I call forth the healing power of the indwelling Christ. I spiritually surrender my concerns. As I pray, I perceive God's healing presence moving through me and my beloved's. This presence is the health beyond illness, the abundance beyond the insufficiency, and life beyond death. It is the truth of my life. It is the truth of my life. It is the truth of your life. The presence of God, the healing presence of God is the health beyond any illness. 
It is the abundance beyond any perceived insufficiency. And it is life beyond death. There is always life beyond death. You know, sometimes we feel that we cannot share what we're going through. We feel that we must keep our challenges to ourselves. But what you will see and hear today is that it is so important for our healing, for our health, for our sufficiency, for our very life to share what is going on in our lives. Our Unity co-founder, Myrtle Fillmore, wrote thousands of letters to people who sought her advice. They wanted to hear from her after her healing experience, after her healing journey. And quite frankly, Myrtle was a little hesitant to do that. As much as she had to offer, she was hesitant at first to do that. But in her letters on healing, she reached, touched, helped, healed, even though she never said she was the healer. She empowered others to do their healing. And so in one letter, Myrtle highlighted her many ailments, including TB, that began when she was young. She said in this letter, and I quote, I was once an emaciated little woman upon whom relatives and doctors had placed the stamp TB. And this was only one of the ailments. I began to claim my birthright and to act as though I believed myself the child of God filled with his life. I gained. Others saw that there was something new in me. They asked me to share it. I did. <laughs> Others were healed and began to study. Myrtle felt it was all about studying and praying and meditating and listening to what spirit was leading her to do. Listen, what, listen to what spirit is calling her to do. And in that belief, she shared that belief with others who wrote her. In the course of her life after her healing from TB, Myrtle received countless requests, as I said, for healing from persons who had heard of her healing experience, but she always responded in ways that empowered each person to do their inner work in order to heal themselves. And so in the following letter to a person looking for answers to a healing need, Merle responds in a way that I saw as prescriptive, and I think you will probably see it as prescriptive as well. This is what she said. The way to healing 
is first of all to re-educate the mind and to establish the truth in all the faculties. Then to see the reality of the body and its functions and to stamp every part with the perfect pattern which is God-given. Then to study the living habits and make them conform to the truth that good only is real and abiding and truly active. She goes on to say, he holds to the truth that his body is pure and alive and perfect in every part because he wishes to use this perfect mental pattern to direct him in his treatment. He then looks into his thought habits to see that they are prompted by faith and divine love and wisdom and life and joy and freedom. He looks into his living habits to see that he is taking good care of his body and meeting the requirements of its many departments and functions. He acquaints himself with the different parts of the body and learns what it is they are truly built for. He learns what each needs and supplies them. And then she says, he formulates prayers based on the truth of his being and uses these prayers faithfully in order to fill them in the mental side of his body. He realizes that he is re-educating his mind and that he is reforming the physical structures. When we make health, wholeness, holiness, the dominant thought of our minds, re-educating our physical senses to their true purpose, our body temples will be sure to manifest their God-given perfection because our bodies are the fruit of our minds. Our bodies are the fruits of our minds. That's Myrtle Fillmore in just one of her letters to her correspondence. Myrtle is telling us today as well as the correspondent what her formula was for healing and what she recommends that we do in order to heal. We remake our consciousness so that it will correspond with God's perfect idea of us. And so we dedicate ourselves to the truth of who we are and train our thoughts to express joy, love, faith, wisdom, life, and health. And I will emphasize that Myrtle did not dissuade people from going to medical professionals. She felt that as you go to spirit, you will be informed as to what is yours to do. If you hear the message that you are to seek the guidance of medical professionals to assist you in your self-healing 
because our bodies are created to be self healers. Haven't you seen a wound? Haven't you had a wound? And then you see how it heals itself? Big or small? In terms of our health challenges, our bodies, our minds, our self healers, and those who are skilled in the medical professions also have that self healing capability within them. Have to digress for a little bit, but it's on point. My brother, who, uh, an older brother, who is also um, meeting a health challenge um, of cancer, was exceptionally sick a number of months ago. And when he was, when, we had, when he had completed a chemo treatment, this was down in Phoenix, all of a sudden, he went into a coma. The doctors thought he was not going to make it. And they called his daughter, my niece, spoke with his wife, who was there, and said that we don't think he's going to make it. 24 hours later, my brother woke up, didn't know what had happened. He was fine. And the doctor said, in fact, my, my niece said to me, she thanked the doctors. My, my sister-in-law said to me that she thanked the doctors. And the doctors said, it wasn't us, it was God. We are self-healers. God is always with us to assist, to lead that healing process. It's God. It's God. The spirit of the living God is in all things. The resources available to us include all that God has created. All that God has created. And so don't be dissuaded from going to the health professionals because they are here for us as well. But understand the healing power is within you. We must also cooperate with our healing. We must cooperate with the folks in the medical professions. We must cooperate when we sense what we must do in order to heal ourselves. So what did that first scripture say that we began with today? With God, all things are possible. Now, many years ago, while in seminary at Unity Village, I had to write a final paper. I had to write many final papers. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to write a particular final paper for a class on healing and wholeness. And all of us in this class were given instructions to include in our final papers the following question. 
How do I explain both of the following statements could be true? And provide an illustration. First statement, I am responsible for my own healing. Second statement, I am not responsible for my own healing. Okay? Well, I began with both of the statements. I am responsible for my own healing and I am not responsible for my own healing can be true according to the meaning we apply to each of the statements. And so I said, the first statement is empowering. It suggests that the individual is taking charge of her own life and life experience. It says that the individual is taking responsibility for the cause and the cure and that both lie within her, not outside of her. This approach is very much in keeping with how Myrtle Fillmore took charge of her own healing. By declaring that she did not inherit sickness, she took charge of the, of the cause of her condition and this led her to determine what she could do to alleviate the condition. And what she did was forgive herself. She loved herself. And through many years, many hours of this forgiveness and nurturing work over a period of two years, she not only took responsibility for her own healing, she healed herself. She had been to countless doctors. They unfortunately were of no help to her. And then the second statement is one that acknowledges it is not I, but the Christ within that does its work. It is the spirit within that transforms any sense of separation and allows its perfect pattern of wholeness to be realized in us. As we release our personality, ego, and allow our true nature to come forward, healing takes place naturally. As Myrtle released her personality that believed in sickness, she allowed the true spirit of God within her to take charge. Spirit was the true healer. Therefore, the statement, I am not responsible for my own healing, acknowledges the power to heal comes from spirit, our true nature. And so, I did get an A on that final paper. <laughs> to put that in. <laughs> um, and I also have to say that um, the instructor, Robert Bromet, is now my spiritual director. Yeah, yeah. He's amazing. He is amazing. And so the final scripture for our healing lesson this morning comes from John 14th chapter, the 10th verse. The Father, Mother God, who lives in me does its work. The Father who lives in me does its works. The power to heal comes from spirit. Spirit lives within us. Spirit lives in the physicians and other medical professionals. 
as we listen to the spirit within, we are guided to our good. We are guided to our healing. And so my closing question to you is, how are you allowing your true nature to do its work? How are you allowing your true nature, spirit, to do its works? And so now in closing, let us together recite, recite the affirmation. It is on your handout. And we say, as I listen to the spirit within, I am guided to my healing. Let's say that again. As I listen to the spirit within, I am guided to my healing. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Jackie. It's beautiful.